Okay, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. Once again, it's another video coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barsham. Yahweh Shai, Barsham, Rakakwadash. All praises and glories definitely, definitely do, especially in these times. It's another edition of early morning thoughts and topics right now it's 2 51 a.m in the morning it's a sunday morning and um you know i just couldn't sleep so i was thinking about this video that i did uh be circumspect and vigilant watch out for the apostate churches and you know there are many components that lead or make up an apostate church and one of them is doctrinal error you know you got certain uh, groups out there Israelite groups that do not care about their doctrine okay they're, they're not concerned if the doctrine is correct um, they say whatever they want they teach whatever they want, and that's very detrimental. Okay, that's very detrimental, man. And this is the thing that um, Jude warned about. Now, of course, if you've been watching my videos, you know about this piece of information here. Pretty much I got this from um, Elder Yashwamba. And, uh, you know... If, for as short as it is, it's a short piece of information. It's immensely powerful. It goes back to a time where you had a lot of apostate churches. And this is not too long after the death and resurrection of Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai went back to the Father. Uh, this Jew that's mentioned here was the biological the biological brother of Yahweh Shai. And he was so moved by all the churches that were popping up with doctrinal error. He was so moved by that that he decided to write this book, which we know as the first chapter of the book of Jude. And in this book, in this book, he warns about these churches, right? These churches that are filled with doctrinal error and really they are apostate churches now what's an apostate that's one who has defected from the faith who has left the faith okay what we call a, in this modern day term we call a fallout a guy who fell out the truth well that's what we're seeing now you have many guys who have fall, fallen out of the truth and created their own thing created their own church and you see them on YouTube, you know, they're, they're uh, gaining followers, they're putting up videos, and their doctrine is filled with error. That is an apostate church. That's the same thing that Jude was warning us about when you read this passage here. And the thing is, eventually, Yahweh Bashim Yahshua will bring judgment on these apostate churches that's why it's our duty to warn you out there those of you who will listen to warn you about these apostate churches and their looming judgment you know judgment is looming over these apostate churches and who's going to bring the judgment let's not forget the heavenly father Yahweh one of his titles is the king of terrors now, there's a scripture where it says, Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Begin with Elder Apostle on down. And we, we did this yesterday at the camp. We keep warning you guys. Uh, first, we're warning the ones who are leaders of these apostate churches. We're warning them through the scriptures. And we're warning you guys that are attracted to these apostate churches. Because they're speaking these smooth things and they have these gimmicks. 
That's another red flag. Beware of any church that relies heavy on gimmicks. And I already did a video on that. I explained. I even looked up the word gimmick. I read it for you. I gave you the definition. You know, a lot of these apostate churches, they rely heavy on gimmicks. You know, case in point, they got the rap division. You know, they, they, the Lord never sent us out there to be rappers, man. Okay, that's a thing of the world, man. Okay, that's just one example of a gimmick. Okay, there are other gimmicks that these apostate churches use. They're super flashy. You know, in this thing of ours, we're not supposed to be flashy. It tells you in the scriptures that the Lord would... As a matter of fact, let me refresh your memory. Let's go to that scripture concerning the garments. What's wrong with having just a plain old garment, man? Why do you have to be flashy? What, the, Yahweh Shai was not flashy. We read about Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, let's, let's get the... Yahweh Shai is the ultimate example of how we're trying to be. Let's get Zechariah the ninth chapter, the ninth verse. So that's another red flag. Beware of a, a, a church that's extremely flashy. You know, that's another gimmick. We got to be sincere, man. The scriptures speak about keeping this ministry with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Check out the nature of unleavened bread. It is not flashy, but it's very healthy. Unleavened bread, you know, that's how we're supposed to be. We mainly rely on being sincere and truthful, man. That's what should be flashy. Humility, sincerity, and being truthful. How about that? Why don't you, why don't you guys try that on for size? Being, being, you, being humble, sincere, and truthful. Those are the flashy things. Anyway, Zechariah, the ninth chapter, the ninth verse. Rejoice, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, meaning he is righteous. Who is this king? Yahweh Shai. And by the way, that's another example of Yahweh Shai in the Old Testament. For you, for you naysayers that say there's no presence of the only begotten son in the Old Testament. Well, who is this talking about? And this is, de this is definitely in the Old Testament, the book of Zechariah. Okay. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, meaning he is righteous, and having salvation. <laughs> so those of you who don't believe in Yahweh Shai, you, you got a problem. How you, I want to know how you're going to get your salvation. That's what I want to know. He is just and having salvation. Lowly, lowly, lowly. Come on, man. It's not about being flashy, man. He is lowly. I just want to look up that word lowly. So that's another red flag. Beware of any church that that relies on gimmicks and they're super flashy. You know they're not in the right spirit. The the, the Hebrew word there for lowly is ein, ein, einya. Looks like einya or einaya. Einaya. Okay, I na ya. It says poor afflicted. See, that's what this thing is about, man. This thing of ours is about being afflicted, man. You know the afflictions of Yahweh Shai. Poor, poor meaning what? You have just enough for the day. You know some of these churches they portray themselves as being in the kingdom of heaven, man. <laughs> They portray themselves as if they're in the kingdom of heaven. You know, they're super fancy, super flashy. They have these lavish so-called Passovers. Come on, man. You know that church is not in the right spirit. That is an apostate church. Okay, let's call it what it is. It's an apostate church. And that same church, you know what church I'm talking about, the super flashy church, that church is filled with doctrinal error. Okay? <laughs> Poor, afflicted, humble, wretched. Poor, needy, poor, and weak. Ah, oh, poor and weak. That's another thing, you know, Israelites hate to appear as being weak. We are weak, man. The Lord said that his, his strength is made perfect in weakness. That's what the Lord told uh, Apostle Paul. You know, Apostle Paul, his letters was described as being powerful and weighty. 
but his but his presence was described as being weak and contemptible. Think about that, man. But you got Israelites that are afraid to appear as weak. Guess what, brothers? I got news for you. We are weak. All right? And we get, <laughs> even though, well, like the Apostle Paul said, his inward man becomes stronger daily, meaning his spirit, but his outer appearance becomes what? Weak. We are worn down. Is it not written we are worn out? The saints of the Most High are worn out by this devil, Esau. All right? But again, you got guys who appear to be, who are afraid to appear as being weak. I'm not afraid to appear as being weak. I got news for you. I am weak, but my spirit gets stronger daily, just like the Apostle Paul says. And I'm not the Apostle Paul by no stretch of the imagination. No way. <laughs> I'm, I wouldn't be fit to tie his shoelaces. But I know one thing. I know my spirit is getting stronger daily by these scriptures and by this understanding. All praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. Okay? So I'm not afraid to appear as being weak. All right? I got news for you guys. All right? Because, hey, there's an old, there's an old uh, uh, saying, you know, uh, the, mainly the so-called Jamaicans, they were known for saying this back in the day. They they would say, uh, let me see if I get it right. They would say, I when them say me weak, I strong me strong, you know? Yeah. So when them think me, when them think say me weak, I strong me strong, you see? So there's nothing wrong with appearing weak. But anyway, let's move on. It says, poor, weak, afflicted, wretched, humble, lowly. That was our Lord. That was our Lord. Okay. And that's from the definition of... Uh, lowly from the book of Zechariah the ninth chapter the ninth verse rejoice uh, rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion O daughter of Jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass meaning a donkey and upon a colt the foal of an ass now this was uh, fulfilled in the New Testament, Matthew 21 and 5, let's go there. They give us a precept, thank goodness, because I would have had to go and look for it. But let's try Matthew 21 and 5. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's start the fourth verse, Matthew 21 and 4. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. What prophet? Zechariah. We just read it saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek, which is another word for lowly, meek and sitting upon an ass, the coal, the foal of an ass. So there we have the perfect example, man, Yahweh Shai. He wasn't flashy. He was meek. He was lowly. Okay. So there you go. So Anytime you see a church that's exact, the exact opposite, that's a major red flag. That's an apostate church. And you got to look at them as such, man. Okay, so we made our point. So let's get back to, uh, let's get back to um, a few things I want to point out. Oh, yeah. I want to show you that um, concerning doctrinal error, because Jude spoke about this doctrinal error. And we see that prevalent right now in these different churches. One of the main things that pisses us off about these different churches, these different Israelite groups, is their doctrinal error. Now they got the new one. Uh, and most of these churches are with that, that you can have sex on the Sabbath. Okay, that's just the latest nonsense to come out. And that, that is so detrimental, man. That violates, first of all, when you go in, let's go in Exodus 20. And this is what I've never heard. I've known the Elder Apostle Tal for a long time, and I've never heard him say the things that really piss him off. But he actually said this. He said when he heard that, that, you know, you got uh, guys are teaching you can have sex on the Sabbath. He actually said that pissed him off. And I've been knowing the man for a long time. And I, I when he said that, I, I took notice. I said, oh, shit, he's really pissed off by that. You know, hey. <laughs> um, let's get the law, man. Exodus 
the Sabbath is a very holy thing in the sight of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, man, the Sabbath. And that's one thing that pisses the Heavenly Father off when you when you desecrate his Sabbath. I mean, it pisses him off. It, it pissed off Elder Apostle Rakar. I'm sorry, Elder Apostle Tar. I'm sure it pissed off Elder Apostle Rakar too. <laughs> Shout out to him. Um, Exodus 20 and... Uh, well, let's, let's start the first verse, Exodus 20 and 1. And the Heavenly Father spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the, that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy power, am a jealous power, or jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. By the way, that's reincarnation. Right there. That is reincarnation, because you keep coming back through your generation. And showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, thy power, in vain. We see that happening. Okay, that's part of a doctrinal error when you say that we don't have the true names of the Heavenly Father and the Son. Come on. And how can you guys accept that? You mean to tell me, and we discussed that at the camp yesterday, you mean to tell me the Heavenly Father is going to give us all this understanding, right? All this, reveal all these, these mysteries to us, who Esau is, what's going to happen to Esau in the kingdom, reveal to us the kingdom, how it's going to be. He's going to give us all this information, right? But he's not going to give us his name. He's not going to give us his son's name, his true name, and his the true name of his son. Does that make any sense? Yet that's accepted. That's accepted as part of the doctrine, man. That is doctrinal error coming from an apostate church. Think about it, man. <sighs> and this is what we're warning you guys about. You know, I'm about to show you a scripture where the Apostle Paul, he actually wept over the of, over this thing, man. I'm going to read it for you. It's in the, in the book of Acts, the 20th chapter. Really, that's what prompted me to do this lesson. That's what inspired me to do this lesson, and I hope it's edifying. Uh, Exodus 20 and 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy power in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Come on, man. You cannot teach that you that same apostate church, you had a member from that church that made a statement, you can call the most high yo play yogurt. And and yet that guy was not reprimanded, he didn't lose his rank, he was not put on blast. The only ones that got on him was us. Beginning with Elder Apostle on down, man. That's an apostate church, man. That church is heading for serious judgment, man. Yahweh Shem Yahshai is going to break up that church, man. Okay? And there are many apostate churches, just like you had during the time of Jude. That's what this information tells us right here. That's why this information is so powerful. And, and we're going to eat off. You see this plate right here? The, the plate of Jude? We're going to eat off that plate for a long time, man. We're going to eat on, off this plate until Yahweh Shem Yahshai start bringing that judgment. And you're going to know, like Elder Pastor said yesterday... When he brings that judgment pursuant to 1 Peter 4 and 17 on these different apostate churches, you're going to know it's the hand of the Lord doing it, man. Because it's going to be so, it's going to be so destructive and so brutal and so fast, you're going to know it's the hand of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahshai, doing it, man. You, 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 you bear witness to it, man. You're going to know, okay? You cannot, you cannot just say whatever you want concerning the doctrine. You cannot teach whatever you want. You cannot teach whatever makes you feel good. Okay? Like it says in Isaiah 30 and, and 10, uh, uh, speaking smooth things to appease the congregation. You cannot do that, man. Okay? And these guys, some of these guys, they have no conscience. You know, like we, we talked about Tazariak, another member of an apostate church, Captain Tazariak, how he butchered uh, uh, Revelation, the ninth chapter, and there was no conscience. He never made a rebuttal, not a rebuttal video, but a, 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 an apologetic video saying, you know what? I was wrong. 
I, I, I shouldn't have even went into Revelation, the ninth chapter. I shouldn't have even went into it because in all honesty, in all honesty, I never knew it. So I shouldn't have attempted to break it down. But recently, the, the uh, individuals at Great Millstone, they, they went into it. They broke it down. So I suggest you go and watch their videos. I myself, you know, speaking on behalf of Captain Tsariak, right? This is how he should think. If he was a, a man of integrity, he should have said, I myself, I'm going to learn it. Then I'm going to come back and teach. It. Nah, there was none of that, man. None of that. So how can you tell me that guy is a man of integrity? That's another thing, another red flag. Beware of a guy who has no integrity, man. No conscience. Okay? These guys, uh, they're, they're the uh, members of apostate churches, man. They have no character. They have no integrity. They're, they're, at the end of the day, they're nothing but a fucking liar. Okay? Nothing but a, a low-life liar. Okay? And I see why the Apostle Paul said, I, 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 well, I'm going to read the scripture. You know, I can't wait to get to it. Let me finish this, man. Exodus 20 and 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy power in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh take his name in vain. <laughs> now, here's the point. I read all that to get to this point here. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay. And what does it mean to be holy? To be in a pure state. Now the scriptures tell us, man, going back to doctrine, the scriptures tell us when you have sex with your woman, you are unclean, man. But these guys teach, they now teach that. Alizar, another member of an apostate church, Alizar said there's no law against it, <laughs> meaning having sex on the Sabbath. And that's one of the things, and El Apostol said that. He said that he admitted it at the camp. He said, Al-Azhar, I was pulling for you, man. I was pulling for you. You know, El Apostol said that. And we all knew this. It pissed us off, but we all knew it, that El Apostol had an affinity for al -Azhar. Not anymore. Because I'll tell you one thing about El Apostol. When it comes to doctrinal error, anyone who's pushing doctrinal error, Elder Pastor don't have an affinity for them. <laughs> he loves the doctrine more than he... Than he <laughs> you know what I want to say. He loves the doctrine more, man. And rightly so. If you ain't teaching the correct doctrine, the hell with you. And anyone that looks like you. Okay? Anyway, let's get to what the Apostle Paul said. Let's, let's get to that. Because we're talking about Jude here and, and, and how Jude was warning these individuals back then about these apostate churches and their doctrinal error. Let's talk about that. Let's, let's read what um, the Apostle Paul said, how he, he actually wept over this thing. And that's really what prompted me to do this video. Uh, Acts, the 20th chapter. Let's go there. Acts 20. Now check this out. This is Acts, the, the book of Acts 20. And I'll start at 25. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of the Heavenly Father, shall see my face no more. So this is Apostle Paul speaking. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. And that's one of the reasons why we're so adamant in warning you, warning you guys out there. And it doesn't matter what group. We're so adamant in warning you guys out there about these these doctrinal errors okay and these uh, call it what it is these apostate churches you know we used to say uh yeah you know uh, you know uh, you can yeah these these other groups they got the truth too no they don't no they don't these other groups yes you can learn you're an israelite from them but these other groups are filled with doctrinal error and they don't care they do not care like i give you an example captain tazariak he butchers uh, Revelation the ninth chapter and he doesn't care there was no video where he came back and said you know what I broke it down wrong the guys at uh, uh, Great Millstone they, they broke it down right I suggest you go watch their video I mean what's, what's wrong with that no see he's trying to it's all about being flashy he's trying to show himself I'm the guy I'm that dude what if you ain't that dude 
What if Yahweh Hashem Yahshai really didn't set you up? Or then again, maybe they did set you up, set you up to be a failure, not a success. Huh? Do you ever think about that? No, these guys don't think about that. And at the end of the day, they have no fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. That's why they treat the doctrine of any old way. They don't care. They have no fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. Now, this is why when Yahweh Hashem Yahshai brings the judgment, that's going to precipitate the fear. That's going to bring the fear. Just like when we talked about this at the camp, just like when Yahweh Hashem Yahshai brought the judgment upon Korah, Dayton, and Abiram. Go read that story. How the earth opened up and swallowed them niggas. You know what that did, man? That brought immense fear among the Israelites, man. When they heard it, when they heard it, and when they saw it, especially the ones who actually saw it, when Korah, Dayton, and Abiram, and, and it, I think it was over, well, it was 250 men of renown and their families. The earth opened up and swallowed them all up, man. And when the, the other Israelites heard that, they, they, pfft, <laughs> the ones who saw it, they were running away too. They said, man, I better get the hell out of here before I get sw uh, swallowed up. That was the judgment Yahweh Bashim Yahshai brought upon the Israelites back then, man. And Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is going to do it again, man. He's going to do it again. Okay? He's, there's a scripture, I believe it goes, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is known in, the, in his judgments. Okay? This is Acts 20. So let's keep reading. It says, Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Heavenly Father. That's our attitude here at Great Millstone. 100% truth. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit hath made you overseers to feed the church of the heavenly father and there are guys who are not practicing that they're not taking heed they're not taking heed what they say or what they affirm there's another scripture where it speaks about the you, you got guys who desire to be teachers of the law recently we see that with sakari they desire to be teachers of the law but they don't understand what they say or what they affirm the apostle paul said that to timothy he said that you got to watch out for these guys who, that's 1 Timothy, the first chapter, somewhere in the, around the seventh verse. The Apostle Paul said, watch out for these guys who try to be teachers of the law or who desire to be teachers of the law, but they don't understand what they say or what they affirm. Clearly, that's written in 1 Timothy. We see that now with these different apostate churches talking about the law, this and the law, that. And they don't even understand the law. How the law works, the dynamics of the law. You got to watch out for these apostate churches, man. I'm telling you, man, your, your spiritual life depends on it, man. You got to know what the hell you're involved in, man. Okay, this is a warning, man. It says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit have made you overseers to feed the church of the Heavenly Father, which he have purchased with his own blood. Head is, head is, how wish I had to shed his blood on the cross. And these guys treat this thing as if, so what? Yeah, I wish I shed his blood on the cross. That's how they, that's so what spirit. So what? So what? You know, I can teach whatever I want. You know, as long as I get a big congregation and I'm looking all flashy and everybody puts me on a pedestal. That's what it's about. That's what this thing of ours is about. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's the exact opposite. Okay, I read to you how lowly our Lord was, man. Our Lord didn't appear flashy. There's a scripture where it said our Lord wasn't trying to gain a reputation unto himself. Every time the Lord did something, who did he give the credit to? His father, Yahweh. <sighs> now, let's keep reading. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. There you go. That's what you have now. Grievous wolves leading these apostate churches, creating these apostate churches. And you know why they created those churches? At the end of the day, out of their own vanity, out of their own vanity, their own conceit. Where it speaks about in the scripture where it says, shall disciples, uh, uh, heaping disciples unto, unto themselves. Yeah. Like you, you look at a guy like Elder Ricard. His church is about his own conceit, his own vanity. 
The same thing with Nate, Bishop Nathaniel. His church, he created this IUIC, which, which is a gross misnomer. Israel will not be united in Christ. Number one, uh, the name of the Son of the Lord is not Christ. That's number one. Number two, it's not Israel that's going to be united. It's the elect of the nation of Israel, according to Scripture. There, there's your example of doctrinal error. Right in the title of that, that group. Right in the title of that group is doctrinal error. But why did he create that? Why did Bishop Nathaniel create that? Based upon his own deceit. Based upon his own deceit, his own conceit, his own vanity. That's why he created that church, if you want to know, okay? <laughs> and not just him. I'm just using him as, as an example. Same thing with Sakari. So the, uh, the, uh, the guy who calls himself Al-Azhar, the chief highest of the highest of the high priests, Al-Azhar, he created that group, Sakari, based on his own conceit and his own deceit and his own vanity. You see? I'm giving you examples. Okay, so it's just like what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. Oh, come on, it's the same thing Jude said. And we're seeing that in, 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 we're seeing that in real time right now. We're seeing that in real time, man. These apostate churches and, and their, their perverse doctrine. Really? You can have sex on the Sabbath? Really? That is perverse, man. That's a desecration of the Sabbath, something that we're supposed to keep holy. Do these guys not know that there's certain days that the, you know what? Let me let me get it, man. You see, this is this, and, and that's one of the reasons why I couldn't sleep. And I'm glad the Alba Shimiyasha put the spirit on me to do this video. Um, and doctrinal error is very doctrinal error. Is, is is important you, if, if you have a if you have a church and you have a doctrine and it is filled with any error or there's any error in it you better straighten that error out man you better get to the root of it and straighten it out you know at one time one west used to teach about acts the 10th chapter cornelius being the so-called white man and he was holding the bible and all that nonsense guess what the holy spirit straightened that out now we know the deal with cornelius Okay, now we know the deal with Romans the 11th chapter, another, another uh, chapter that was taught incorrectly at One West. The Holy Spirit through, you know, through Great Millstone straightened that out. Now we got the complete understanding of Romans the 11th chapter, the complete understanding of Acts the 10th chapter, and also the 11th chapter. So you cannot tell me doctrinal error is not important, Okay. Um, let me get that scripture. Yeah, I kind of forgot it for now. You know what? It'll, it'll come back to me. But let me just move on with this. Um, Acts 20 and 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So the Apostle Paul, he was warning us about that way back then. And we see that now. Like I just told you, a lot of these apostate churches was created based upon the ones who's leading them based upon their own deceit and their own conceit and vanity. And you got many people following them, man. Okay. Let's read that again. Acts 20 and 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, three years, I cease not to warn everyone I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So the Apostle Paul was moved to tears, warning individuals of these uh, grievous wolves and their apostate churches that they created based upon their own conceit, deceit, and vanity. 
Now, you think those guys, are good, they're going to examine themselves? Like the scriptures say, examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith, trust you're not, you're not a reprobate. You think they're going to do that? Well, concerning Nate, based upon that dream, his only saving grace is that dream that he had. So we believe he may come out of it. But he still got to pay for all the all the souls that he deceived. <laughs> hey, brothers, all I can say at this point is um, this is why I did that video. Be circumspect, man. You know, this information coming from this passage here of the purpose of Jude is, is spot on, man, especially now. Like Jude said in this passage, um, he, well, let me just read it. It said Jude wrote this book. Jude wrote this book, which is the book of Jude, the first chapter. It's only one chapter long. Jude wrote this book to the church because the church was going through a time of great apostasy. And there was no shortage of doctrinal and moral error inside the church. While there were other false churches robbing from the doctrine of the apostles, but mixing it with error. And we see that now. Okay, since Great Millstone came on the scene, 2007, and it's, it's obviously how Bashim Yasha is working with Great Millstone. Just the, the name, the very name alone proves that the spirit of Yahweh Shai is with us. Because Yahweh Shai himself is a Great Millstone. He's great and he's a millstone. Okay, Great Millstone describes the true nature of Yahweh Shai, okay? He's great and he's a millstone, okay? So, um, since we came on the scene, the sum of 2007, many of these other churches took their doctrine from us, but they took what they liked and added error to it, added lies to it, and, and created their own doctrine. You can't do that, you know? You cannot do that. And this is what was happening back then. This is what Jude is warning us, warning us about. Like I said, we're going to eat off the plate, the plate of this information. We're going to eat off that plate for a while, man. Until the Yahweh Hashem Yashai start bringing these judgments. First Peter 4 and 17. All right, so um, I'm going to end it there. Hopefully some brother will uh, watch this video and be inspired to do his to his commentary and and pick up hopefully out you know pick up where i left off something i didn't mention hopefully he'll bring it out you know whoever that brother may be but uh yeah man <laughs> you know something that was on my mind so like brothers say i had to put that down on wax you know all praises to you how about shy for giving us the insight for giving us this knowledge this truth this understanding for really showing us what this thing of ours is really all about. Okay, so on that note, I'll see you in the next video. Shalom.